Good morning, Excel lovers and financial modelers. Just want to share with you a very small trick. I, I guess you, you like it. So this is how you do if you have so much data that you want to do your additions or your multiplication, whatever you want to do. But you want to do it in a much, much quicker way. For example, I can highlight this. All I want to do is to find an amount of liters for diesel and petrol. According to, to our analysis for this particular project that we are yet to undertake, The project is very simple. We want to, or my client wants to come up with filling stations to set up filling stations in the country. This is just a template that I was developing for, for him. So the first thing that I wanted, the data I wanted was to know what is the daily average liters per car each time a client is filling up fuel or goes to a filling station, what is the average amount or the average liters? Secondly, wanted to know the annual vehicle growth rate. Obviously, this is the data that has to be extracted from external sources, such as maybe the World Bank report or, or the Central Statistics Office. Obviously, thirdly, this is just an assumption in terms of the, the number of days in a year. We believe that the filling station should not have a holiday. It should be throughout the year. So the days is 365. The daily vehicles in 2021, it is believed that this particular filling station on a daily basis, the average is that it is going to be having about 100 vehicles filling up their gas tanks. But the question was, what would be the average liters that would be filled in, whether it's diesel or petrol? I mean, the behavior is the same. So what is that average? So this is the data that we needed to extract from existing filling stations. But even a filling station also, you have to look at where is it situated? Is it in town? Is it in the rural setup? Is it in the township? Or is it along the highway? Or maybe interconnecting to another, or connecting to another town? So these are few intricacies that needs to be appreciated before one develops a proper model. I've always said it. All models are wrong, but some models are useful and you need to know that. Mm -hmm. So then when to Minister of Finance website and got this data on diesel, petrol and, and kerosene from November 2020 to February 2021 in terms of the quantities in terms of the quantities needed or in terms of the quantities that were actually used in the in 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 in, in the country but obviously these there should be liters though they should have been i should have raised a thousand that is fine we can leave it like that <laughs> then using this wanted to know the proportion of diesel petrol and kerosene in terms of the usage, you can see that on average, the, num the numbers are stable. They are extremely stable. So on average, diesel is 69% usage in terms of the quantities, petrol 31 and kerosene just 4%. So use this same analysis now to break for kerosene as a percentage of these 
of the total? What's the percentage of kerosene? Uh, no, uh, not as a percentage of the total, but as a percentage of only diesel and petrol. What is the percentage of kerosene? So this is how it moves. The numbers, they look slightly, they look like they're the same, but they're they are slightly different. So this is what was quoted. But I know for a retail filling station, I think the proportion will not be like this. Maybe the proportion will be more petrol than diesel, I don't know. But looking at the national consumption is that we are consuming more diesel than petrol. Obvious for industrialization. Otherwise, if there's more petrol than diesel, then we're going to get very worried. Because I think petrol is more on the retail side. Diesel is more on the production side. So of the of the economy. Yeah. So using these statistics, now here showed the number of vehicles. But like I've said, down there, the statistics that I'm using and at national level obtained from the Ministry of Finance website. For retail filling stations or gas stations, as they call them in America, it would actually be very different. I'm seeing a proportion of petrol. I'm seeing petrol could maybe slightly higher than, than, than diesel. But this is information that you have to collect from specific key filling stations and do an analysis so that we see this proportion. But at national level, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So here we are just assuming these are just numbers. I plugged in, I'm waiting for the client to give me proper numbers on the daily vehicles. And all I need is just those that are highlighted in blue because in modeling, when we color code the assumptions in blue, it means they're hard coded. It means they are, you can change them. Then what is in black is basically driven by a formula. Mm -hmm. Here on the annual vehicle growth rates, if I wanted, you could have actually put the GDP, right? The growth domestic product. So the economic growth rate would actually determine how many vehicles you can have. But this is one thing that has to be first, you need to develop some econometric type of models to see whether there's a relationship between the economic growth and the number of vehicles that are coming in the country. So you need to check on the data and develop a formula that would actually help to sustain this assumption, so to say. But after all has been done, you want now to compute to check how many liters that you have, diesel and petrol. Here, here you have you have you have the total number already. The total number, the total amount of liters for both diesel and petrol cars, but you want to split this using the proportion down there. This is how you do it after you've highlighted. You want to do it at once. So it will be like this. Times the liters here. Mm -hmm. So time the letters here, what you do. You lock the row, you come down there, we pick for the average split, which is this on diesel, and you lock like this. Mm -hmm. 
no not that one sorry it's the one below which is this one here then we lock the column so once you are done you press the control key hold the control key and press the enter key just hit the enter key so how do you know that what you've done is correct we can check the trace precedence the auditing tools and the formulas so you'll see that the first one it is hitting 2021 and hitting the diesel assumption here which is very correct if we try the last one the diesel one is it the petrol one you go to formulas you go to trace precedence so you'll see that it is going to hit on the petrol so this is how you can do your computations quickly even when you have something like this ideally what people do would say this the liters diesel times the quantities here the the, the price times the quantities then you do like this, then come here. Others will do like that. I know there are much quicker options. Then one would come from here, copy and do this. Now check how much time we are taking instead of just mm -hmm. instead of just highlighting that and say equals this amount or the, the price times the liters just that then hold control and press enter key so if you have to use trace, trace precedence or f2 key you click there you see where it's hitting if i come here i do the same you see it is just correct come there f2 key it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So in short, for you to get this number here, you are hitting this and that for you to get this number here you are hitting this and that number there mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, uh, write in the comment box, put your thoughts. So thank you so much. If you want to learn Excel or financial modeling in depth, do not forget to write to us and that will consult. You go to our website, which is www dot roy consult advisory dot com or you can call me on my number which is zero nine seven seven four seven eight six seven four i think we are the best in terms of offering online financial modeling courses because we don't do pre-recorded videos we normally have live classes where you are able to ask questions and we even go into depth, even on things that are outside the, the, the agreed syllabus so that we build the best financial modelers in the, in the country, in the region and in the world or across the globe. So 
it doesn't matter the distance where you are. You can just subscribe to our courses. You can even customize. You can say, all I want to learn is how to develop management accounts models. We'll take you through until you develop a very good model that you can use in your company. Sometimes you may just want us at Roy Consult to just help you clean up your report so that your report looks very reasonable, or should I say professional, and you'll get the kudos because we've been in the background that we signed the nine disclosure agreements. Thank you so much and bye-bye.